First thing is this. You guys heard my uh, Buick stories all the time. My car, I have a car that stays in third gear all the time. I actually uh, took Jimmy, it's been like a month or two ago, he was with me. And I think he saw the full effects of how great of a NASCAR driver you have to be. Because you can be at like a stop sign, and even though there's a car like two miles away and it's a grandma going 120, you've got to like climb it up to pull out so she still doesn't T-bone you. Because it takes you about half an hour to go the first 10 feet. It's like in third gear, it's really slow. And, and I kind of got used to that. And there's a little uh, a second street by our house and there's some flood balls there. And I'm used to like looking and make sure I can't see a car as far as the eyes can see because it takes me 20 minutes just to make that little turn to get out. I'm used to that. Not too long ago, I, was with my, uh, I switched vehicles with my wife. I actually dropped her off. I uh, came back, was going to go get my wife, and I'm in her car, which actually has all the gears it's supposed to have. And I can tell you guys, I'm used to when you get to that stop sign, you hammer. I mean, you go pedal to the metal, because if you don't, you're going to die. So you're used to that. So I have the kids with me, and I'm not really paying attention. I'm used to that stop sign, you know, just flooring it. I talked to him, boom, stomped it. Almost hit the flood wall, you know. And I'm like, freaking out. He was like, do it again, do it again. It's like, no. And you know, I'll give you a thought here. We, we can even kind of make this kind of our closing thought. Change perspective. I'm wondering if God isn't kind of saying to us as God's people. You know what? Man, he's done some amazing things in our church in the last few years. And, and people who have been part of it, especially from the beginning, go, man, it is really amazing what God's done, where we're at. It's all glory to God. But I wonder if God doesn't say, what about in 2012 when you stop it? Because you don't realize the power I have. In 2012, I want you to stop it. Because you haven't even came close to realizing what I can do. That's my prayer that we, as a group of people, would come together and say, you know what, God, we're asking you to do above anything, above our imaginations, what we can even think of. Because we know you have the power. This group of people said the same thing. They said, you know what, we thought we were supposed to mourn, but we're celebrating because God did something so big. And all of us have to stop and say, only God. If we did this on our own, it would have never happened. Only God. That's my prayer for you guys. Here's the cool thing. I'm not going to read through it. You can read it when you get home, but it's Nehemiah 8, 13 through 17. They actually find out there's some things they haven't been doing, and they start doing it. They go live in temporary shelters. Really cool story. But here's the cool thing. Once you receive this gift, you have to do something with it. You have to do something with it. That's kind of the last thought I want to give you, is we have to do something. We received this amazing gift. We have to do something. 